Okay, so we continue with our discussion on distributed forces. And again, to give you a kind of a, a bird's eye view of, of what we're trying to do in this chapter, is we if we have a distributed force, we often want to try to find the total uh, force or the, the resultant effect, the total effect of that distributed force okay over the entire region so again if I think this is what I was discussing already is that you the, the idea is that you sum up a distributed force by adding up all the forces okay this is the idea the intuition and you get a total force <clears throat> okay that we do by first of all looking at the intensity of the force at any location what is intensity Intensity is basically a force per length, force per area, force per volume. So force per meter, or I guess we should rather say Newton per meter, or Newton per meter squared, or Newton per, per volume, per cubic meter. These are intensities. Okay, so we've got a line distribution, so we need to look at line intensity. Uh, distribution of a force over an area and distribution of a force over volume okay so if we've got a line distribution the idea is is like you've got a an example is like you've got a, a cable and so the force doesn't act at one specific place the gravitational force it acts it's distributed over the entire cable and a line intensity is given by Newton per meter, which is what I was saying there. So um, that's what this, this does. So we've got force per unit length given by Newton per meter. And just a bit more, again, a bit more in, uh, intuition is that if we wanted to find the total force, the total gravitational force acting on this cable, what would we need to do? We would need to get rid of this meter in the denominator by multiplying by the total length right what's the total length we multiply by that then we get the total force that's acting that the total gravitational force similarly with area um, we've got now newton per meter squared so this is a force distribution over an area over an area given by newton per meter squared for fluids this is called pressure and for solids it's called stress this is the internal distrib distribution of forces in solids okay this is a more advanced topic but you, you just get the idea that if you've got a surface area Right, there's a cable, this is a line distribution, and then you could have water that's being applied against a wall. So there is then a, a surface distribution, Newton per meter squared. And if you want to get the total force, what do you do? You multiply by that area. So that you multiply by the area, you get rid of the... Uh, those units and you're left with the total force that the water is applying or the the fluid is applying to that surface okay then the third one is a volume distribution this is also called a body force which is very similar to what we were talking about with the with the line and the way that you look at the, the way we describe the intensity the intensity of the gravitational force is given by the specific weight rho times g where rho is kilogram per meter cubed that's your density and then we multiply that by gravity meter per second squared and we're left with newton per cubic meter okay so that makes sense again if we want to get the total um, weight we multiply whatever you're whatever you're given by the volume and that gives us the total weight 
So do you, do you guys see a bit more of the intuition behind this first one about getting the, about summing the effects of the distributed force, getting the total force? In order to get this, this first one, we need to have the intensity of the force um, at any location. Now, what about the second one? This is an important paragraph here. Okay, so let's just read it. The body force due to the gravitational attraction of the Earth is by far the most commonly encountered distributed force. Section A, which is the next section, treats the determination of the point in a body. Do you see now? You see that second thing, the point in a body through which the resultant gravitational force acts. I hope, does it make sense what I'm saying here? The first step is calculate the total. That's total resultant. First calculate the resultant gravitational force. And then you need to find a point on the body which is which has the equivalent. It's a, an equivalent effect on the body. And this is called the center of mass. Okay? So this is what we're going to look at next. We're going to look at this idea of determining the point on a body through which the resultant gravitational force acts.